What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, and welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC 2022 Spike Myth Cup video. So, what I want to talk about today is something that I actually find to be super, super interesting, and something that I, as an... I, it feels weird saying I'm an old school VGC player, but it's, it's like appropriate now. Like, old school VGC is supposed to be like Gen 4 and 5. I started in Gen 6, it feels weird, but as an old school VGC player, uh, a lot of these moves that got better now that we're playing Spike Myth Cup more as a community um, are, are very nostalgic to me. They're moves that I missed running because they're just so cool to use. And these moves either got screwed over by Dynamax or just ended up not being viable with the environment of Dynamax. So yeah, that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to be talking about moves that some of you newer players who might have started in Gen 8 aren't aware are like actually really, really good moves um, when you're playing in non-max. So yeah. Before we get into that, do me a favor, if you guys enjoy this same point in time, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications, because I bring you daily VGC content, and answer my comment question of the day, is there any move that I missed that just got better without Dynamax? So yeah, let's get into it. So, uh, I thought I added the moves for all these Pokemon, but the one I was going to talk about with Zapdos is actually Quick Guard. So, a lot of people, um, when they're talking about Dynamax, they'll say like, I personally am a big Dynamax fan because I've never liked playing against uh, Fake Out. It feels like there's no Fake Out counterplay in the game. Well, that's, you know, that's not true. I mean, we have Queenly Majesty, we have Dazzling, we have uh, Psychic Terrain, and we have Quick Guard, and a couple of other stuff. Like, you know, you could just run Inner Focus. Uh, but yeah, Quick Guard is probably the most um, easy to slap onto a team move as far as Fake Out counterplay. And it's especially good when you're trying to set up Trick Room. So it didn't see a lot of uh, it didn't see a lot of gameplay in Gen 8 with Dynamax turned on, uh, mainly because the way that you would deal with a Dynamax Pokemon, or the way that you would deal with like a Trick Room setter or anything really, uh, would be just to like annihilate it with Dynamax or taunt it or whatever. And Quick Guard wasn't nearly as important because while Fake Out was still very important, the Pokemon that you wanted to attack with um next to it like next to the quick guard pokemon would just dynamax anyways so it was a waste of a move slot so now i mean we would see it sometimes with like mian Xiao. mian Xiao would sometimes run it but uh right now pound for pound i would say the best quick guard user is going to be galarian zapdos and it's especially important for a couple of things let's say you're running a hyper offense team like you were using like specs regieleki next to a zapdos you can quick guard preventing a fake out and then just hits thing with like a, a specs volt switch and one shot it if you're using a trick room pokemon uh there are a lot of prankster taunt users uh like tornadus or whimsicott or sableye or grimmsnarl there's a lot of options there uh or maybe your um what's it called or maybe your trick room setter isn't uh a ghost type and it's actually you know weak to fake out uh this is another way to prevent that the only thing is that quick guard is actually the exact same priority as fake out they're both plus three so uh you have to make sure that you're faster than the average fake out pokemon so incinerar grimmsnarl sableye they're all like in the base 60s they're not super fast so quick guard is generally fine on like most pokemon rillaboom you might have some issues if you want to run a slower quick guard pokemon uh, because Rillaboom is like base 80 or 85 speed. So yeah, Zapdos is base 100. So most fake out Pokemon, you're going to be fine versus. Um, but you know, as far as things like Prankster Thunder Wave from Grimmsnarl, this is also a way to block it since uh, Prankster is only plus one, you know, Quick Guard's plus three, so you're fine. So yeah, Quick Guard is a very good move that you should definitely be running right now. Next is Wide Guard. Wide Guard is a move that you are, all, you are all familiar with. Everyone thought it was going to be good once Restricteds came around, and it was only good in niche situations. Uh, the main reason is, in previous Restricted formats, obviously there are no Restricteds in this one, but I'm explaining why Quick Guard wasn't good before. Uh, in previous Restricted formats, Groudon and Kyogre were only really able to hit you with uh, the majority of the time, you know, sometimes you would see like Scald Kyogre, uh, they would only be able to hit you with spread water or ground moves. Now, with Dynamax turned on, uh, they're actually able to adapt Dynamax and hit something with a single target move, so Wide Guard kind of fell off. Um, also, the importance of Rock Slide went down heavily since Rock Slide's main draw is, you know, you can all you can deal like Rock type damage, but uh, it's mainly the Flinch Chance. The Flinch, I can't speak, the Flinch Chance. So being able to wide guard on that is actually also super important. Earthquake is much more common now that 
um, you know, you can't just max quake through things. So wide guard being able to protect things like stack attacka from earthquake, being able to protect um, things like uh, an incineroar from muddy water tapu finny. All of these are super common moves. So there are plenty of good wide guard Pokemon in the game. I just chose Araquanid because it's the one that I really like to use, but uh, some common decent wide guard Pokemon you're going to see are stack attacka, um, Araquanid, uh, Celesteela, I believe, is on here. To Celesteela? Yeah, they're Celesteela. Yeah, there are a few decent wide guard Pokemon. It's a it's a really nice tech move just to have in your team. And yeah, Whimsicott Encore, or any Encore Pokemon, gets so much better. Uh, so while Encore did see some usage in Dynamax, you could not Encore a Dynamax Pokemon. So being able to Encore something and not have it just Dynamax and hit you anyways is super nice. Uh, and that's pretty much it for Encore. Uh, ways that you could use Encore that are like really significant, you can use it to automatically reverse a Trick Room without having Trick Room on your own end. Let's say your opponent goes for a Trick Room and you still have your Whimsicott in the field. Well, that next turn, you can Encore that Pokemon that just Trick Roomed and have them reverse the Trick Room and then Trick Room's gone. Pretty cool, huh? Uh, beyond that, if a Pokemon clicks Protect, next turn Whimsicott Encores and they just Protect over and over and over again. There's a lot of ways that you can use it. It's also really great versus Fake Out Pokemon since if they Fake Out that first turn, you Encore them and they're stuck Faking Out. Prankster Encore is actually such a good move and it just doesn't see very much usage in Dynamax, so now that Spike Myth Cup's around, very, very good. Roar. Now, Dynamax Mons weren't able to get Roared out uh, and there are going to be some situations where I think Roar is actually pretty important. So Roar is a sound-based move, which means it bypasses all kind, or it bypasses Substitute. Um, you just have to be careful with soundproof Pokemon. But the main uses for Roar, it's like it's the slowest priority in the game, and it forces your opponent to switch. You might think that's bad in VGC and that it's not actually useful, but it has so many, so many niche situations that you can find uses for it. Uh, for example, if you're facing off versus a Body Press Kamoo. Um, and they're not soundproof. I guess Whirlwind in that case. Let's say you have Whirlwind, right? Uh, it, I'm just going with like a, a setup Pokemon. Body Press Ferrothorn. Let's go with that. Let's say you're facing off versus a Body Press Ferrothorn, and it's in the rain, and your Flare Blitzes aren't doing enough to it, and it's just it just keeps setting up and setting up, and you don't have Taunt. Well, guess what? You can roar it out, and all of those Iron Defenses were just completely wasted. Let's say you're facing off versus a Bulk Up uh, Tapu Bulu or a Bulk Up Zapdos. Roar it out. All that setup's wasted. Let's say that you need to prevent Trick Room. Guess what? Roar will go before Trick Room. You just roar that thing out, and, and the Trick Room does not go up. Very useful. A lot of things you can do with this move, and uh, I think a lot of people sleep on it. But, yeah. Next. Heavy Slam and Heat Crash. These are all going to be one unit. Uh, Weight-based moves weren't able to be used on Dynamax Pokemon, and I thought that was really dumb. I thought it was a really dumb mechanic, uh, but it kind of makes sense. They got big. I think the one that really annoyed me was Low Kick, but also Low Kick. Basically, here's the deal. Now that things can't Dynamax, there are going to be some situations where you want to run these weight-based moves. Celesteela would usually run it anyways, because Max Steel Spike is still pretty strong off a Heavy Slam, uh, but being able to Heavy Slam like an opposing Xerneas, or I guess in this format, the best fairy type would probably be like, I don't know, Togekiss, one of the Tapus. Being able to heavy slam that and not have it just Dynamax in your face and make the move completely immune, so much more useful. And it also makes like bulky Celesteela a lot more useful because Celesteela kind of became offensive for a while, but this is actually like the nastiest Celesteela set you could ask for. Well, I guess, you know, maybe not Flamethrower, maybe now you want to run like Body Press. Well, I guess it doesn't get Body Press. I don't even know. Usually it'd be like Heavy Slam, Leech Seed, Protect, Flamethrower to like KO Cartano. But, you know, Sub's also an option. Basically, Celesteela's like super, super good. Heavy Slam is super, super good. Heat Crash, there are a couple of Pokemon that run it. I don't think Colossal is going to be great. Uh, but as far as Pokemon that get access to Heat Crash, uh, some that you could probably get away with. Rhyperior, Caparaja, Guzzlord, uh, Stonejourner. There's a lot of things that you could get away with this move on. It's just decent. You know, it's, it's a weight-based move that all of a sudden became viable. Low Kick is actually probably one of the most important uh, because with weight moves becoming more important, 
sort of like an anti-weight move is is good too. Uh, Celesteela and Colossal and Stack Attacka, they hate taking low kicks. Low kick, while it is neutral on Celesteela, is still going to be maxing out in that base power. I believe it's 120. It's as strong as a close combat, um, but there's no downside to it. I guess the only downside is don't use it versus like a not heavy Pokemon and then you're fine. Uh, but being able to low kick things like Tyranitar especially and consistently one-shotting that thing is going to be amazing. Stack Attacka hates taking low kicks. It's all super important for dealing with these top threats because many top threats are actually quite heavy. If we like just go through the list of like super important Pokemon that are going to be good this season, Ferrothorn's heavy, Heatran's heavy. Um, what else is up here? Obviously, we said like Tyranitar, Stack Attacka, uh, da 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 I'm trying to find one more just to like drive my point home. Celesteela, I already said that one. Uh, da, da, da. I don't know, you guys get my point. There's a lot of decent like heavy Pokemon. Oh, Metagross is another one, but I guess in this case, if you're using like, you know, Bisharp, you can just knock off. But I'm talking generally like low kick stocks went way up. And we're gonna have our last move just be like a catch all move. Um, priority moves. Priority moves in general get so much better. Uh, they're usually very low base power, 40 base power sometimes like 70 with like Sucker Punch. Uh, Pokemon that rely on priority moves like Azumarill or Scizor did not like Dynamax um, because they relied on these priority moves to deal damage. They're too slow to use like regular moves effectively uh, and their priority moves have some kind of like buff to them whether it be you know plus six Aqua Jet off a of Belly Drum Azumarill or Technician Life Orb Bullet Punch Scizor they all were like while the moves weren't super super strong they were basically as strong if not a little bit stronger than like a regular move that a pokemon would use when you account for stab and everything um with dynamax things could just you know soak up the hit and one shot that pokemon and these pokemon weren't great dynamax targets either because you know when you're relying on a priority move to deal your damage outside of dynamax uh your max moves are going to be like 90 base power 100 base power because it all relies on the initial power of the move uh, beyond that, they're not fast enough to really do anything. So Pokemon that rely heavily on priority moves are a lot better. So Bullet Punch, Aqua Jet, Quick Attack, all of that way up. So yeah, uh, that's just my list of moves that got a lot better that newer players are going to want to take a look at when you're team building. Uh, but let me know if I missed anything. I think I got most things. I'm sure I'm missing something like, I don't know, Crafty Shield. I don't think Crafty Shield's that much better, but uh, yeah, let me know. If you guys enjoyed, leave a like in this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.